Good morning, my name is Jorge Soberon and this is a presentation together with Luis Osorio on the relationship between niche structure and local population abundance. For some time, people have noticed that uh, there are features of distributions that seem to be related to niche uh, ideas. Um, for instance, there is the, this uh, very classic uh, relationship uh, that has been discussed by people like Jim Brown, John Lawton, Kevin Gaston, Bob Holt, that there is a relationship between the size of a distribution, how wide or how big the distribution is, and the population abundance. Uh, to your right, you see uh, an example where you have range size in the x axis and axis and uh, uh, density of population in the y axis, and you see that there is some sort of positive relationship. Although this is not what we are going to be talking about, there is an interesting point. The explanation for this is based on niche theory, so I'm going to use it as an introduction. This is the basic idea that Bob Holt uh, used to explain this relationship between size of a distribution and abundance. First, he started assuming logistic equations, which is the equation, the first equation to the left. And from the logistic equation, you can get the population equilibrium size. How many would they be individuals there will be in the, in the equilibrium, which is the second equation and with a little hat equals the birth rate minus the death rate divided by the density dependent component of the equation. Now go to the, to the graph. Uh, in the x axis you have some environmental gradient. So if it is wider, like for instance A1 is wider than A2, that means that the distribution is, is also larger. A1 is, has a larger geographical expression than A2. There is a supposition here that I'm not going to get into and that Bob Holt ignored. Uh, now take uh, B0. B0 is the, the birth rate and that depends on the environmental gradient in a simple way, which is a triangular way. It's like a hinge in Maxent and the point in the, 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 the vertex of the triangle is the, the optimal value of the environmental gradient. And now you, we have two density independent death rates, D1 and D2. D1 is uh, smaller than D2. If that means that the abundance is going to be larger. But also notice that D1 predicts a larger environmental gradient as well because B0 minus D1 or D2, if it is positive, then you have uh, a positive growth rate and therefore viable populations. So this is the explanation uh, of the relationships, positive relationship between population density and size of the, of the area of distribution. And notice that this explanation is basically based on niche ideas because the idea that B0 changes with the environment is exactly the idea that Hutchinson has of the niche. Uh, something as an expression of the fitness of the population as a function of the environment. There is another related idea. Uh, the idea is called the Abundance Center Hypothesis and was proposed by Hengeveld and Heck in 1982 and it, with a fair amount of, of empirical support, uh, the idea says that the niche, uh, I mean, that the number of individuals in a distribution is higher at the center of the distribution, at the geographic center of the distribution. Uh, Henkeveld and Heck used very coarse grain data for um, support for this distribution. And you see the kind of data they used in the, in the map there, they used the breeding survey data at that time. Um, there is an, another a variation of that idea, which is the abundant niche center hypothesis. This was proposed by Martinez Meyer et al. in 2013. 
and it says that what matters is not the distance to the centroid of the distribution in geographic space, but the distance to the centroid of the distribution in niche space. The geographic abundance center hypothesis has no theoretical support that is accessible. There is a paper published in a very obscure Dutch journal that I have not been able to, to get. I hope I will eventually. Uh, but I have not seen any other uh, explanation in the literature. Um, so it's basically an empirical regularity in the cases for which it is true. And, and there have been a lot of criticism showing that it fails in many other cases. Um, but Enrique Martinez Mayer noticed 20 years ago, although he published just seven years ago, that in many cases what matters is not the distance to a um, geographic centroid, uh, the centroid of a distribution, but the distance in a niche, in niche space, as you can see in the graphs there. There seemed to be a relationship between the distance to the centroid of the niche model there as with an ellipsoid and the abundance in geographic space. This is the main topic of this talk. This is what I will be talking about the remaining of the talk, uh, that there is a relationship between population abundance and position in niche space. Well, this hypothesis that makes sense is the subject of very intense debate. In the last two or three years, there have been many papers published uh, discussing it. Uh, in favor, well, the first one was by van der Waal in 2009, uh, before Martinez Meyer published, although Martinez Meyer had the idea and had been discussing it with people like Peterson and myself uh, years before. Then Martinez Meyer published in 2013, and then Osorio Olvera et al. also published in 2019, all in favor, with caveats. Uh, against this, basically, uh, Tad Dallas, who has been publishing against uh, the idea, um, with a lot of uh, controversy about whether he has been using the right data and the right methods. Finally, there are also undecided uh, people saying, okay, yes, there is a relationship, it has a, a, a nonlinear relationship, which would be in agreement with what uh, Osorio Olvera et al. said and so on. Uh, you can see uh, to the right the kind of data that Luis Olvera has been uh, publishing uh, with, uh, with all the collaborators in that paper down there in Ecology Letters. And you see that there is a red um, um, relationship, meaning that the farther apart you are from the centroid of the niche, which is an ellipsoid, the lower the abundance you will find. Now we have here a question. Is there a theoretical reason to expect the abundant niche center hypothesis to be true? And the answer is yes, there is a theoretical reason to expect it. Uh, it follows from the idea that we have mentioned in, in talks uh, in the past that niches have structure and that that structure is measured in fitness units. It's a direct implication of our basic second assumption of niche theory. You remember there are two, the Hutchinson's duality, that there is a relationship between niche space and geographic space. And the second assumption is that niches have a structure that is not just random values of fitness, but they are, um, well, uh, arranged in some order. In this talk, I'm going to remind you about these ideas and then re-explore the question of whether one can use ecological niche modeling to measure population properties and more specifically population abundance. Maybe some of you will remember that there we saw this graph uh, published in 1973 by Maguire, <clears throat> Bassett Maguire, in which uh, he proposed that niches have a structure measured in terms of uh, relative growth rate, the intrinsic growth rate, which is the fitness measure, and that is highest in towards the center of the shape and lowest towards the borders of the of the shape, and that the shape is, is a convex shape. This theoretical idea is supported by the little data that is available. There, there's a lot of data for one single variable, which is temperature, 
there is even a database which is in that uh, in that uh, link that I am uh, showing there but um, that is just for temperature one dimension for two dimensions there are less than 10 papers an example is the one I'm showing to the right about um, uh, temperature sorry about the misspelling in units of mortality and you see that uh, depends on salinity and temperature and it is a convex set with highest values or rather lowest values of mortality in the center of that shape uh, for more than three dimensions there are very few or none papers now can we put these ideas in terms of equations yes we can it's a basic population equation thing uh, x with a little dot on top means the growth rate of the population in the eighth patch imagine that you have a metapopulation structure with the uh, cells on a grid and you go one by one elements in the grid checking how is the population growth rate in each one of those elements so uh, the population growth in the ith element depends on a logistic growth which is the the, the first parenthesis depends on an intrinsic growth rate which is r minus a, a density dependent um, factor which is the the coefficient of um, x squared and that's the a value which we don't assume it changes with um, we don't assume it changes with the environment but that can be relaxed easily then there is the second parenthesis which is an alley effect you remember alley effects means that you don't have a positive population growth unless there are enough uh, individuals of your species in the same area the simplest thing to think about is you need a pair a male and a female to start the population at the very least maybe more and how many you need is the m value there and finally you have movements in the first sum there are movements from the patch to outside to disperse and the uh, I'm sorry it's the the from other patches to the patch where you are and the last sum is the dispersal from your patch to elsewhere so it's a negative term because that patch is losing individuals by dispersal and the above the above can be related to with niche by assuming that the growth rate which is r depends on the environment and uh, that's the second equation there it's a it's a gaussian uh, relationship meaning that there is some optimal value which is defines the centroid of the niche uh, and then towards the 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 the, the margins of that um, uh, centroid you find lower decreased values of the growth rate and finally you have movements which are defined in the third equation the entire thing can be programmable in r or in some other language but it has it has been programmed in r by luis osorio so summarizing we have a prediction the basic prediction is that if you have a fundamental niche which has some sort of regular shape and in the graph to the right you see the shape tends looks like a ellipsoid uh, the centroid is the blue points and the periphery is the yellow and all the red points are the all the possible um, accessible the all the possible um, environmental values in a large region of the world that's the the old world and this is the niche for the colored dove the paper was published by Ingelnoff et al in 2017 so you measure the distance from the blue part to any other part the farther apart you are from the blue that means that the lowest population density even going to zero if you are outside the niche this is the abundant niche center hypothesis the theory of the center niche hypothesis um, suggests that uh, niche considerations and movements are entangled because they appear in the same equation and you cannot solve the equations without either niche or movements in, in, in the 
in each one of the welding the solution. So um, Luis Osorio made a number of simulations and you can see that it, it is true that uh, dispersal affects negatively the relationship. The first graph shows uh, the relationship between between each distance to the centroid and number of individuals and you see that it's a growing relationship, sort of clean, uh, because the capacity of movement is very small and the capacity for movement increases towards the right and you see that the slope of the relationship goes down the more the individuals are capable of moving. So under the right circumstances, data support the theoretical idea. As you can see again with data, those blue points are data, different bird species with data from the breeding bird survey in the United States and you see that there are negative relationships between distance to the centroid and number of individuals. But there are many reasons to accept exceptions as the equations um, uh, allow you to explore. The first thing is what distance is used, a Mahalanobis, which is a distance that allows for covariance or a Euclidean distance. Are there Ali effects, that is thresholds in, um, imposed by low population numbers? Is the relationship linear? We see in the graph that it seems to be non-linear. Are there other species interacting? Is the species just invading or has already achieved some sort of steady state? All these questions matter. For instance, uh, what, what the shape of the niche? You can measure, uh, model the niche with an ellipsoid like to the right or with a convex hole as many people do to the left that will place the centroid in very different parts of niche space uh, and the relationships to between abundance and distance is much better when you model using an ellipsoid. Uh, second thing um, maybe well th th that's important and also if you're using a Mahalanobis distance or a Euclidean distance. Um, Convex holes are very affected by outliers, or you, although you can make them not as affected by outliers, but the shape of the of the thing you are using as a model of the ellipsoid, as a model of the niche, matters. I am going to show you this with uh, an animation using the software that uh, Luis Osorio developed. Uh, this is a, a situation where the 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 area with a positive niche is just in the as you see in the little blue dots in the right side uh, graph and the population is expanding but uh, the capacity to expand is not uh, very large so it will stay basically where the niche is favorable and you will see that there is a very positive relationship between um, niche position and number of individuals in this second animation you see that there are the, 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 the species capable of dispersing farther apart from where we started and therefore it's going to be creating sink populations all the time and that means that the correlation between niche distance and number of individuals is not as good. In this animation you will see how the slope is changing as well as the distribution uh, the distribution is spreading and you see the the line the blue line to the right uh, increasing because as the species occupies all the available suitable space the correlation between suitability and abundance increases too in this final example the blue area in the map is a suitable region for that uh, bird there and the starting of the invasion, this is a real case, uh, it's in Florida. And Florida is not the most suitable place for, the, for this bird. The best uh, places are in Mexico. So you see how the thing is spreading and you see the bar, the legend to the of the graph to the left, changing in color because more and more individuals are there. Uh, when, the, when the species reaches Mexico, the graph will um, go up 
because it's more suitable and therefore closer to the centroid of the niche which you see there in the to the right side and in the more suitable places there are more individuals <clears throat> finally i would like to remind you that when you use um, ecological niche modeling algorithms uh, there is a misnomer we don't really we're not really measuring niches which are measured in units of fitness what we are measuring is similarity environmental similarity to places where we have found the individuals of the species uh, and we assume that that shape is a representation of a niche um, and, and it's not a bad assumption as you will see in the next uh, in the next figure what you see in the graph is a maxent uh, model of the black points uh, in the in the graph and you see that there is very much an ellipsoid shape of the Maxent model. This should not be surprising since Maxent is only capable of modeling ellipsoids, paraboloids or hyperboloids uh, with, with a little caveats there that I'm not going to get into. So uh, what you see is that a Maxent model looks a bit like an ellipsoid in this case there are other cases in which that is not so true uh, but uh, the point is that uh, maybe this assumption that what um, a niche modeling algorithm does is not far away from what uh, modeling a proper niche with fitness units uh, at least in an ordinal sense closer to the centroid better fitness, farther away from the centroid, bad fitness. So to conclude, maybe we can postulate that the, the ranking of outputs in an ecological niche model is correlated to the ranking of fitnesses. And that is not an absurd idea and theory supports the idea. Uh, and of course, this doesn't mean that the output of an ENM as such would correlate with fitness. It's just the distance to the centroid. Finally, there are tons of complicating factors that may hinder or obscure this theoretical relationship. And you should keep that in mind. Uh, movements hinder or obscure the relationship. Ali effects obscure the relationship. Habitat limitations obscure the relationship, presence of competitors, obscure the relationship, and so on. But it's very interesting to see that at least theoretically we should expect such a relationship and that when you measure using the right kind of data, the right kind of species, the prediction is supported.